All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Wahweh Hakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders of great most on that rule well. Peace and salutations and many blessings to you, elect Akiam, kicking sword of sincerity and in truth. All right, I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, and I'm going to be doing uh, another lesson. And this one here is pretty much going into the book of life and the importance of the book of life. All right. And also to the importance of um, striving for our names to, get, to be written within that book around the time of the visitation. All right. Because um, ultimately, when you go into the book of life, it's pretty much um, pretty much, I should say, spiritual documentation or spiritual tabs. The Heavenly Father pretty much keeps on us and um, pretty much goes into the doings that we've done being down here or, you know, speaking as one of the hopeful elect that is and pretty much um, ultimately our names being sealed within this book. OK, because when Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai or when he sends when Yahweh sends Yahweh Shai to judge this place. All right. The ones that are going to be found worthy to receive salvation are going to be individuals whose names are written within that book. OK, so that's what I mean when I say spiritual documentation. All right. And pretty much um, the Heavenly Father had sent angels to keep tabs on the things that we do while we're down here. OK, that's why it's very important for us to meditate on this word and to trim. All right. Understanding that we are being watched. OK, and our deeds and what we're doing are being jotted down. OK, now, naturally, ultimately, we understand that book was already something that was written even before the foundations of the earth. OK, and um, the instructions that was set for us as a people, that being Israel, that is all right. The instructions that was set for us to do when you go back to our ancient customs, I should say, where there were always um, tabs that was being placed. All right. There was always documentation that was placed in regards to one's registry. All right. What lineage you had came from, the deeds you might have done on the face of this earth. All right. And those deeds, a lot of times they were recorded. All right. Being kings and different nobles. And you read about that in the Chronicles. But ultimately, we had always had scribes or people that were um, set forth to jot certain things down. OK. And even when you go into history of that, when one was to be put to death or die, they was jotted out of a particular book and they was added to a pretty much um, a book of records of the ones who had died from the past. Okay. So when you go into the origins of that, that pretty much, um, it goes into it. Okay. Now I got a precept that I want to bring out and that's going to be in the book of, uh, Ezra, the fourth chapter in the 15th verse, I'll start at the 14th verse. And it says now, because we have maintenance from the King's palace and it was not meet for us to see the King's dishonor. Therefore have we sent and certified the King. All right. That search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers. OK, so there was a book of records that we had had. OK, you got the Chronicles, the Kings. All right. There were there's there was always um, there was always words written down of acts that our forefathers had done. And even the scriptures that we read right here to a degree is a book of records. OK, because these are all, of course, we understand it's a book full of laws, statutes, commandments, but it's also a book full of actions that our ancient forefathers had done. OK, whether it's to teach us on things that we need to do or teach us on things that we shouldn't do. All right. Thus being the wicked ones that were written. All right. And even certain righteous men that were written that had fell at certain times and learned through trial and error. OK, at the end of the day, this is a book that's full of instruction and you have um, a plethora of of different examples who are written within these scriptures. Okay. But this here in verse 15 again says that search may be made in the book of records of thy fathers. So thou shalt find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto kings and provinces. I'm sorry, provinces and that they have moved sedition within the same of old times for which cause was this city destroyed. Okay. So pretty much, Going into this particular book of records right here, it was jotted down about the of or of the wickedness that our forefathers had done and of remembrance of why Jerusalem was casted or, or, or set on fire. OK, so pretty much going into this particular verse here, there's actual uh, there was actually a physical book that was written back then of all the records that our forefathers had done in this particular part of it going into what our wicked forefathers had done. Okay. 
Now, ultimately, using this scripture here as an example to just show that we had utilized this and written things down. But namely, that was an example of what was already established in the heavens. All right. In the book that Yahweh Yahweh has written. OK, that all of our names are written in. OK, now the thing of it is we want to make sure that our names aren't going to be blotted out. The only thing we want to be blotted out within that day is our sins. OK, and it's obvious you read it here in um, Ezra, the fourth chapter, the 15th verse how our fathers were written in these book of records and it goes on the mischief and the and the lack of faith and the rebellion that they had had here okay we don't want to be included with that all right because israelites that had that mindset and that spirit are preserved from fire and those are the names that are going to be blotted out or scratched out of that book okay as the scriptures say all right now the scripture that i want to go to is going to be in proverbs chapter 22 And I'm going to just read it from the top. It says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. All right. And ultimately, that, that good name, when you really want to go down to the nitty gritty, is pretty much a reputation on how one carries himself. Because the thing about a name is that it lives on. OK, and you want to make sure that your reputation all right. Or pretty much I should say your your again, your name lives on and that's going to live on through the your representation of what you've done as you've been here on the earth. OK. A good name. You don't want to be remembered as a whole ass nigga. Excuse my language, but you don't want to be remembered as somebody who's done a lot of mischief and a lot of rebellion in your life. All right. Because there is negativity added to that name. There's not a positive light within that. All right. That's why the scriptures say a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And best believe those names that are written within that book of life are going to all be good names. OK, because what what comes with that good name? Salvation, rulership. OK, dominion over the earth, being of the first fruits, not tasting death, as the scriptures say. I mean, ultimately, you know, even there are certain men of the elect that are going to taste death. But what I what, what I should allude to pretty much is being a governor next to Yahweh being those joint heirs. All right. As Yahweh has eternal life, his men are going to have that as well. OK. All that ties into a good name. And the only way to receive a good name is through the actions that we fulfill on the planet Earth. Righteous actions, that is. All right. Another scripture that I want to go into is going to be in the book of Revelation. The oh, matter of fact, I want to read in the book of Exodus chapter 32. OK. We shouldn't think not for one minute that our actions aren't being recorded. All right. And, you know, of course, first and foremost, talking to myself. All right. But, you know, the scriptures say in the book of Zephaniah 1 and 12 that um, a candle is put upon Zion. All right. And when you go into that, pretty much, you know, um, our actions and the things that we're doing are being shown. Now, of course, we understand that while we're down here, we're in this flesh. We go off and we do certain things on certain occasions. But we also have to remember and resort back to sacrificing, making our bodies that living sacrifice, that living sacrifice. OK, because ultimately we understand Yahweh was the ultimate sacrifice. But without sacrifice, there is no way for you to repent for your sins. All right. And those men that offer up those sacrifices will be forgiven from the heavenly father and their sins will be blotted out. OK, and that's why they're pretty much pretty much the scriptures go into how to elect sin shall be covered. And that's through sacrifice, namely with Yahweh Shai's blood. But Yahweh Shai's blood is going to be covered over those men that are going to make sure that they make themselves a living sacrifice. The elect. All right. And those actions will be jotted down. They're being jotted down and noted and being reported back to the heavenly father. OK, now this is the book of Exodus, chapter 32, and I'm going to start at uh, verse 31. And it says, and Moses returned unto Yahweh and said, oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. OK, now these men that sinned a great sin, best believe their names are remembered, man. And they didn't have a positive light when it came to their names because they had the stigma or reputation of individuals that sin great sins. And the leader of those people were Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. All right. Because when you go into this part here in Exodus, this is when um, the Israelites demanded a golden calf to be made. All right. And they rebelled against Moses. So ultimately, they rebelled against the Heavenly Father. All right. 
And they did that by rebelling against Moses and Aaron. All right. And they had Aaron make a golden calf while Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the law, statutes, commandments from from Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, from the heavenly father. All right. Now, you had a, a you had three leaders of this rebellion of Israelites. Now, of course, you had a ton of rebellious niggas, but three names that come to mind that um, helped influence this rebellion were were Kor, Dathan and Abiram. OK. And the heavenly father had dealt with those Israelites that rebelled and wanted that golden calf built. OK. Now, going into it again, just giving a brief summary going into this. In Exodus 32 and 31, it says, And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Okay. Now, this was, um, this scenario had taken place roughly, um, well, roughly 34, 3300 years ago. Okay. Now, this book predates that. OK, what is this book that Moses is talking about? OK, it's the book of life. How do you know that? Let's keep reading. And it says, and if the Lord, I'm sorry, and Yahweh saith unto Moses, whosoever had sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Verse 34, therefore, now go lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. So it's still giving Moses commandments. Look, do what I told you to do. OK. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. OK. Now, there's a few things I want to touch up on here. One is going into this angel and how this angel has a capital A on it. OK. Every time you see the word angel written in the scriptures with a capital A, and it's only a few times that's going into Yahweh Shai. All right. Now, that word there is Malaak or messenger, a representative, uh, a representative. And it says a theophanical angel. All right. But there when you, when you look at our vocabulary, when you look at the words that are written within these scriptures. All right. We understand it's the English language, but it goes back to the Hebrew. But when you look at certain languages, for example, when you see capital G, capital O, capital D, most of the time it's talking about Yahweh. All right. Or if you see it, um, capital G-O-D. You know, it's talking about Yahweh. OK. Also, too, when you see it written in a lowercase g or an O, you know, it's talking about a lower level God. All right. Either, either an idol or either a title that he's going to give to us to his elect. OK. Or his angels. OK. That's lowercase g. Now, when you look at angel here and you have it typed in with a capital A. You see angel, angel, lowercase, and you can do it on your own because in this lesson here, I'm going to have a picture in the background. But if you want to do it for your own, check it out. And you'll see in Genesis 48, it's a capital A. All right. You see in Exodus 23, it's a capital A. And you also see in Exodus chapter 30, 32, it's a capital A. All right. Every other time you see it's a lowercase a. All right. So that capital A has to hold some type of weight or some type of significance. OK. And again, when you go back to what was read, this angel, which is capital A, clearly says he shall go before thee. All right. Nevertheless, in that day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. All right. And who's going to be the one that visits? Because Yahweh, Yahweh is not going to get off his throne. All right. But he's going to use his right hand to execute his judgment or that chief angel, which is Yahweh Shai. All right. And that's what's going to visit this place. All right. And that's who's. That's who has the power to keep your name or not blot out your sin because the heavenly father will blot it out with his right hand. And who is his right hand? That's Yahweh Shai. OK, so when you read this here in Exodus 32, he goes into blot, blot, go, blotting out those names. All right. That have sinned against him. Who has power to pardon those sins? That's Yahweh Shai. All right. But his blood's only going to part a pardon a select few. All right. And those are men whose names are going to stay in that book, whose names are not going to be blotted out. Let's go to Revelation chapter three and verse five. It says, he that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white remnant. All right. And that white remnant ultimately represents purity. OK. And I will not blot out his name. All right. And who is his eyes speaking? That's Yahweh Shai. 
All right. If you have a red letter edition or a, a scriptures with red letter, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. And Yahweh Shai says, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. All right. So this angel right here in Exodus 32 is talking about Yahweh Shai, man, because Yahweh Shai is that angel that was written of. And he's speaking on it in Revelation, the third chapter and the fifth verse. OK, now, how do we know it's this angel that's going to visit this place? How do we know that's Yahweh Shai? OK, let's go to the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 22. In verse 19. And it says, and if any man shall take away from the words of this book of this prophecy, the Most High shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. And how is the Most High going to do that? He's going to use his right hand to do it. He's going to use your house to do it. All right. And from the things which are written in this book. OK, so now we're going into if a man takes away from this. All right. Because it is not taken away from that a sin. And is it a law written on the judgment of a man that takes away the words of the uh, of the book and adds on to. OK, now, how is he going to judge it? OK, how is he going to judge that person that does it? Verse 20. He which testify if these things saith, surely I come quickly. And that surely I come quickly is written in red letters. Okay. So Yahweh said, surely I come quickly. It says, Aman, even so come Lord Yahweh. Okay. Now Yahweh said, surely I come quickly. Now, how do we know wh what time do we know that is? That's the visitation. Okay. Because that's when Yahweh is going to come. And he says, quickly. Will he make his visitation upon this place? All right. Now, when you go back to Exodus 32 and verse 34, it says, therefore, go now, lead the people unto this place. And he's speaking to Moses, which I have spoken unto thee. All right. Now, ultimately, this place is goes into the, the, to the land of our rest. All right. Back then, Moses was leading us into Israel, the land that was promised unto us. Now, we understand through time we were taken out of that land. We were scattered. All right. But. The prophecies say that we're going to be brought back. All right. We're going to be redeemed. Lord, when we those men, the elect are going to be redeemed and they're going to be brought back. All right. And those are men whose names are going to be blotted out. But how are they going to be brought back and who is going to do it? So when you read it, it says, my angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I will visit their sin upon them. OK, so that angel is going to visit the sin. So Yahweh Shai said, surely I come quickly. All right. So we need to make sure when Yahweh Shai or that angel comes back, we're doing the things we need to be doing. So we will be written. And so the heavenly father, Yahweh will remember us. OK. Matter of fact, let's go to um, Malachi. And I have more scriptures but, and it's so much more. But I, I'll bring this out of Malachi and I end it off in Daniel. But this is Malachi chapter three, verse 16. And it says, then they that feared Yahweh spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. All right. So what is this book of remembrance? This book of remembrance goes back into that book that was written in Exodus 32. All right. Where it says, and if not, blot me, I pray thee out of thy book, which thou has written. OK, so there's a book that the heavenly father had written before the foundations of the earth. Before the foundations of anything. All right. And whenever we please him and call on him and do the work which we're supposed to do, communicate with one another. All right. Be brethren. Serve him. What is he going to do? He's going to open that book and it's going to be a reminder and a re it's going to be a reminder to him that he had our names written within it. All right. And he's going to he, he ultimately used Yahweh Shai as that reminder when he had shed his blood for us. OK, but Yahweh Shai has been given that power because ultimately he's the right hand to be able to block people out of that book. OK, but if Yahweh Shai's blood covers you, your name is going to be within that book. And the Heavenly Father is going to look at that book because Yahweh Shai said, I shall confess thy name openly before my father. OK, and he's going to look at that book and he's going to see, OK, this person did what they were supposed to be doing. They're going to receive salvation. They're going to be clothed in those right. I'm sorry, those um, white robes. OK, they're going to be covered. Their sins will be covered. The, the sins will be blotted out, not the name, not the individual. OK, because you remember, namely. 
Proverbs 22. Yeah, Proverbs 22 talks about keeping that good name. All right. So those elect men, those names are going to be covered by the blood of Yahweh Shai, man. Those names are going to be the ones that are written within that book. Those names are going to be the ones who the Heavenly Father, when he opens it up, he's going to find that name written within it. Now, is that something worth fighting for, man? That's a heck of a thing worth fighting for, if you ask me. All right. A heck of a thing worth fighting for. Matter of fact, this, you know, the spirit moved me to go to this scripture here in Luke 10. This is Luke chapter 10 and verse 20. And I'm going to start at verse 18. And it says, he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, that's now that's bad right there, because that there shows us he gave us power, but he didn't give that to anybody. He gave that to his servants. OK, now let's keep going, though. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. OK, so pretty much he's saying don't rejoice in the fact that. You know, with my name being within you, everything is subject unto you, spirit, scorpion, so forth. All right. But he's saying rejoice in this, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So he's saying don't rejoice in the fact that I gave you power. All right. Now, that's not implying that we don't have to rejoice that we have power. All right. Through Yahweh But he's saying rather rejoice the fact that your names will be written within that book. All right. That's ultimately what we want. We want to make sure that our names are within that book because everything comes within that. All right. Being a joint heir to Yahweh Shai. All right. And, and governing the kingdom of heaven and having that name is what we should rejoice in. All right. But in order to do that, we need to make sure we're doing the things we need to be doing in order to be written within that. All right. Hey, man, this book is very important, man. The Heavenly Father does have a book. All right. If we keep records of everything. All right. If we look at our, our ancient city and they kept records of everything, if we got this book right here that we read and that's records. Hell, even Esau and his court systems and all that have uh, have records of your names and your birth. So you mean to tell me if that's the case, the heavenly uh, the, the heavenly father won't have one? You know, it makes no sense. Now, I'm going to end off on this last scripture here. And, you know, Lord, I know it's, um, it's it's becoming quite long. You know, I didn't even intend on it being this long. Lord, when this making sense. But this is the book of Daniel, chapter 12. And I'm going to start from the top. And it says, and at that time, and this is going into the judgment. This is going into the visitation. All right. When Yahweh sends his angel, capital A. All right. Yahweh Shai. And also, too, with Yahweh Shai, he's going to have ten thousands of his hosts. And who leads the hosts is Michael. All right. It says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince would stand it for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. All right. This goes into the visitation, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And we need to make sure when that time comes that we covered from our sins. OK, because you remember in Exodus 32, the heavenly father told Moses, saying, I'm going to blot out the name of those sinners. OK. Now, let's go into this into this and it says and at that time thy people shall be delivered so who's going to be delivered the ones whose names that aren't blotted out the ones whose sins are covered by Yahweh Shai all right they're going to be the ones that's delivered and it says and everyone that shall be found written in the book so yes Yahweh has a book that's written a book and we need to make sure through the spirit, man, that we're doing the things we need to be doing through the spirit to remain in that book and not to be blotted out. All right. Because it'll be it's a beautiful thing to have Yahweh Shai. All right. The chief angel confess our names in front of him, man. All right. That way, Yahweh will open that book and look and be like, OK, yeah, man. That's why in Malachi, the third chapter, it says in that day, I shall make them as fine jewels. OK. And that fine jewels goes into what we shall be in that day. Speaking as one of the hopeful elect, if we endure. All right. Being clothed in that white. So, hey, Lord, when this lesson was edifying, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rekakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. 
peace and salutations and many blessings to you elect Aki. I'm across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word of sincerity and kicking this word in truth. All right. Shalom.